Hello, in this video we're going to learn how to calculate the pH of a buffer using the henderson hasselbalch equation. Okay, so remember, a buffer is a solution that has a weak acid and its conjugate base present in roughly equal quantities, or a weak base and its conjugate acid, again in roughly equal quantities. So if you were to calculate the pH of this, well, you'd use an icebox. So since we care about pH, it's easier to do this all in terms of the acid, because then we'll directly get the concentration of H. You could do this all in terms of the base, and then you get the concentration of OH, and you have to convert. But we typically do it in terms of the acid, because it's more straightforward. So, okay, we have the acid dissociation equation. And so now you have some initial value of both the weak acid and of its conjugate base. So this is not zero when you have a buffer. You're adding parts of both of these. And that's the big difference right there. Your change is still the same. This is going to go to the right because there's no concentration of H3O+, and so we have to make some of it. And then here's what your equilibrium looks like. All right, then you'd plug this into Ka, just like we've done before, and go. Okay. And that would work, and you'd get X, and that'd be the concentration of H3O+, and you'd get the correct answer. But we have a simpler way to do this called the henderson hasselbalch equation. So let me explain what that is. All right, so this is the equation for Ka, and basically I'm going to do a glorified rearrangement job on this. So let me rearrange this. Solve for H3O+, by dividing both sides by A-, and multiplying both sides by HA. And then... I'm going to take the negative log of both sides, okay? And then I'm going to use some logarithm rules here. So the fact that we have these things on the right side multiplied together means that, well, we can just take the sum of logs due to this property. The log of products is equal to the sum of two different logs. And then use another log property that says when you invert what's inside the log, it just changes the sign on the log just to make this positive, because people like pluses instead of minuses. It makes them happy. Literally, that's the only reason why. And then now, okay, the negative log of H3O plus is the pH. The negative log of the Ka is pKa. And then this term's still here. Cool. That's basically it. We call this the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now, the big trick is that in this equation, these are equilibrium concentrations. Because remember, all the way back here, they came from the icebox, here and here, right? And so this is the equilibrium concentration that we then plug into here, and then when we do all the rearrangement, it's still equilibrium concentrations. However, we can often neglect x. We often assume that the equilibrium concentration is about the same as if, uh, you know, you can ignore the subtraction. So your equilibrium concentration and your initial concentration are pretty much the same, so we can make this the initial concentration if we want. That's the assumption here. And that assumption can give us trouble, so we have to keep that in mind whenever we use this. So we can put initial concentrations in here and it works out. So I'm going to generalize this for both weak acid and conjugate base and weak base and conjugate acid buffers into this form. And so this could mean a weak acid and its conjugate base. It could also mean a weak base and its conjugate acid. So the identities there are still the same. Okay, so this is the henderson hasselbalch equation. We have to be careful when we use this. It's very tempting to throw numbers in here when you're trying to solve other kinds of problems because it has a lot of variables that you need for non-buffer problems, for you know normal acid, base, whatever. But this really only works for buffers with some certain conditions. So you have to make sure you use it right. People use this wrong all the time. So the henderson hasselbalch equation, you only use it when it's a buffer and you have these three criteria. So one, your Ka has to be reasonable. So somewhere below 10 to the negative fourth and somewhere above, I don't know, 10 to the negative 11, something like that. And most weak acids fall into this range. So that's not too big a worry. Secondly, your ratio of base and acid have to be reasonable, right? They have to be within a factor of 10 of each other. And so that's what we mean by point, between 0.1 and 10 when you take the division. So somewhere like pretty close. And otherwise, it's not a really good buffer. So don't really want to deal with that anyways. 
And then here's another big one, is since we're going to neglect x, we need to make sure that the number that we are subtracting x from is relatively large. And so this is about a millimolar, 10 to the negative 3 molar. This is a molar. I mean, you don't usually get higher than that, although you can. And so, you know, as long as you have this sufficiently concentrated so you can neglect x. All right, so let's do some examples here. So we've got a buffer where you have sodium acetate and acetic acid. All right. So these equations are at play. So the first thing is when you look at the sodium acetate, this thing, and you can write the Na in the front or the back, depending on your mood, it's going to dissociate. Notice this is a forward arrow, so that means it's dissociating strongly to the right. And here's sodium, and here's acetate. Now, this acetate is going to play a role in this equilibrium. And again, we typically phrase this as the acid equilibrium because it's easier to work with it. So here's the acetate. Then you also have acetic acid, right? So these play together into your Ka. So concentrations, right? We start with 0.3 molar of the sodium acetate. And that means since this dissociates completely in water, we also have 0.3 molar of the acetate by itself. I shouldn't say also 0.3 molar. It's more like instead because it turns into the acetate, the H3COO. All right. We also have 0.2 molar of the acetic acid. And now one thing that you might be thinking is, well, so this is going to make some quantities of acid and base. This is the solution to the problem once we get down to it. So these quantities are here as well, but we can get away with ignoring them because this number is much, much smaller than 0.3. So we're just going to take this and replace it with 0.30, and it makes a ton of sense. So get rid of these. All right, so now we have our icebox. Again, this is the Ka, the acid equilibrium up here, right? And here go our concentrations, right? The big difference is there's now a number here when we do a buffer. And all right, here's the equilibrium. This is going to shift to the right to fill in this zero right here. Now we have two ways to solve it. The way that you know how, which is still perfectly valid, is just solve for x, and then x gives you the concentration of H3O+. Plus. The negative log of that gives you pH. The new thing we're going to try is the henderson hasselbalch equation. But we're going to start by solving for x first, just because that's what you know how to do. So you take the form of Ka, and then you plug numbers in, just the Ka and then the three entries on the equilibrium line. And then we can get away with neglecting x. Then we solve for x. x is 10 to the negative fifth. This is 0.2 it's subtracted from. This is a great assumption that we can go, away, go ahead and neglect x. Great. Take the negative log of that, that's your pH for the solution. This is the right answer. It's a perfectly valid way to do it. Let's try to do it a faster way with the henderson hasselbalch equation. All right, so here's the equation. And well, if we're gonna do it thoroughly, even though there's zeros here for initial, well, it's truly, it should be equilibrium. So let's just toss the equilibrium numbers in here. And then, well, we saw that x is tiny, so we can get away with ignoring them. So then now this is just back to initial. So we can do that. And that works because x is small because we have large enough numbers here, right? Remember I said these numbers have to be pretty big. That works. And then now we can find the pKa, use the numbers here, and solve for the pH, and get the right answer also. So this is another way to do it. Either way is OK. But just be careful not to use this very tempting equation uh, when you're not supposed to. Um, so we didn't really need the icebox at all, right? Here's the question. Well, you can just plug the numbers in here since you know it's a buffer. You know the Ka is within a reasonable range. You know the concentration is good. You know the ratio of concentrations is pretty close to each other. Perfect. You can use this equation and just solve, right? So this can save you time. That's all it is, is a time saver. It's not like this equation is the only way we can calculate buffers. No, you know how to do this already. It's just that here we're um, trying to save some time. So why does henderson hasselbalch only work for buffer problems? Well, so here's, say you're trying to find the pH of just acid. Well, by the time you get down to it, the equilibrium numbers that go in here in the henderson hasselbalch equation the x is just hanging out by itself. You're multiplying by x, so you can't ignore it. So then you got to go find x to then plug it into this equation. 
And by the time you find x, well, you've already solved the problem. So it's not really worth it. It doesn't make sense to use this equation for um, a non-buffer problem. Another useful thing about the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, aside from saving you time, is that you can do this. So, all right, here's the equation, different font, but whatever, base over acid. And, well, the concentration of base is moles over liters, right? Concentration of acid is moles over liters. So when you put these together, base over acid, here's moles over liters, moles over liters, the moles will be different, but since these are present in the same solution, that means the volumes are the same, and we can cancel this out. And then we have an alternate form of this equation with just moles in it. So this may be useful to you. Another cool outcome of this is that if you dilute your buffer, the pH will stay the same, which is not true for a normal acid solution because the um, pH is the concentration of H3O+. But here, the pH comes from the buffer regulation, and it just depends on moles and not liters. So that's useful. All right, so now a couple examples. I'll try to go pretty quickly through these. So feel free to pause the video and work it out and then see how it, um, if your answer matches mine. All right, here's the equation. And when you use this, the weak acid's on the bottom because we're starting with a weak acid. The conjugate base is on the top. Perfect. And here's the pKa. We'll need that. And so we just plug these concentrations in, the formic acid on the bottom, the sodium formate, and thus just the formate concentration on the top. This is in moles per liters, so you know you can think of this as molar. I didn't put the units in here because they cancel out anyways. You could also put just moles in here, and that would work fine as well. And then now we solve this and we get the pH. Ta-da, there's your answer, pretty quick. Now, here's another example. Pause the video, give this a try. So now what's different here is that we have a weak base and it's conjugate acid. So we're trying it the other way. And here's the Kb of ammonia. So we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And to do so, you need pKa. So we have to convert the Kb for ammonia to the Ka for the ammonium, NH4+. And then now we can use this, right? The, um, the base is on top. That's the ammonia, NH3. The NH4+, ammonium's on the bottom. And then we can find the pKa by doing this, and then plug the numbers in here, and then solve for pH. So again, this equation is a time saver. It's pretty useful. But all it is is just a glorified rearrangement of the form of Ka equals, which we've been dealing with for a while now. So it's not anything special. It's just a time-saving device. But irrespective of that equation, now you know how to calculate the pH of a buffer, which is super useful. So thanks for watching.